Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. Today I wanted to address a new subject that we haven't talked about, and that is adjusting the gibs on a lathe. Now, uh, most machine tools have slides on them, machine slides, and the slides are adjusted uh, and tightened uh, because of wear, and uh, they're assembled that way at the factory with, uh, with gibs, and I'm going to show you uh, what a gib is in a moment here, but uh, let's read this uh, real quickly here. All lathes employ precision slideways, and that would be the cross slide and the the uh, compound rest. The cross slide and the compound slide both ride along dovetail slideways, and after time the parts that ride along the slide ways begin to wear. To compensate for this wear, machine tools are equipped with adjustable parts called gibs, that allows you to eliminate the space that has been created by wear between the uh, slide ways. Now there's two types of gibs, straight gibs and tapered gibs. Straight gibs are adjusted by screws spaced out along the length of the gib. The screws push the gib in to create more contact with the sliding mechanism. And the uh, Craftsman Atlas lathe is made that way and that's the one I'm going to adjust today. Now my clausing lathe and many other lathes and a hard hardinge that I have and the Bridgeport mill have tapered gibs which use two screws and the screws are located in each end of the tapered gib and one screw acts as an adjustment while the other acts as a locking mechanism. Because tapered gibs are wider on one end than the other they slide in or out creating more or less contact between the sliding mechanisms. You know, when I talk about Gibbs, I always think about a famous singer from the 50s by the name of Miss Georgia Gibbs. They used to call her, uh, here she is, ladies and gentlemen, her nibs, Miss Georgia Gibbs. And then she would sing songs such as Tweedly Dee. As some of you may remember that if you're old enough. We are now standing at the 12 inch Atlas Craftsman lathe, and uh, again, this machine has uh, two machine slides. This is the cross slide right here as mentioned in many of my other videos and this is the compound rest but it also is a machine slide I've got that loosened up now and uh, they glide on dovetails and you can see where they get the name for the dovetail and we got another set of dovetails over here I have removed the guard or cover from that we don't want chips to get in there but again as these uh, uh, parts wear uh, we can adjust them by tightening up the gibs and that's done with one, two, three, four screws with lock nuts on them. Now on the compound here there's just three of them. I'm going to take the compound off of this lathe and over to the bench here presently. Now how do you know whether or not you need to adjust them? Well if there is a lot of play here back and forth that play can be caused uh, by two things. Number one is wear on the screw and the brass nut that's in there. Some of them are a cast iron nut. I've, I've forgotten what this is offhand, but we'll see here in a moment. And the other thing is that uh, the cross slide has worn. Now this lathe hasn't had all that much adjustment, but this, or a wear, it hasn't had all that much use that would cause it to be badly worn but it still needs some adjustment so I'm going to do that and uh, we want this to move fairly free but not too free and if we had the screw and the nut disconnected you should be able to slide this back and forth without too much effort if it's real tight then you've got the gibs too tight now some people tighten up their gibs on purpose during certain operations that they're performing because they want absolutely no backlash. They do not want this to move on them, depending on what their machining operation is. This one is way too loose and I'm going to take it off now and meet you at the bench. The compound is now off of the lathe and it's on the bench here. Now some of this work you can do on the lathe but uh, for my purposes here I'd rather do it on the bench but I've removed the two screws that held this plate onto the end here and that allowed me to screw the screw all the way out and uh, so I can set this to the side and it's just out of the way and I'm going to clean everything real good you can see there's chips in there 
I'm going to take the whole thing apart so you can see it, but uh, you're always going to find chips inside of these uh, machines, but you really should never clean your machine with compressed air and because the chips go everywhere and you're going to, you've got enough trouble with chips the way it is, but uh, it, it is not recommended to use uh, compressed air. I can move this back and forth and it's not too terribly loose, not as loose as I thought it was. But you should be able to move it back and forth without the screw. If you cannot move it like this, then your gibs are too tight. If it literally will, can be, you can shove it and it flies off of there, then it's way too loose. Now this isn't going to come off uh, because that uh, nut is still on there, at this moment anyway. From this view, you can see the dovetail, and this little part here that's shinier than the rest is the actual gib itself. And you can see that uh, these three screws are simply pushing against the gib to cause more friction. There's the nut that the uh, screw rides on. Now I'm going to take this apart. I took an Allen wrench and loosened this set screw and then that allows me to slide the brass nut out of there and it was brass. I think it was cast iron on Sheldon lathes if I remember right. That can be cleaned up real good and I like to use brake cleaner to, to clean some things um, but I'll do that outdoors. Don't use gasoline, whatever you do. And uh, regular uh, mineral spirits or paint thinner is probably the safest and the best and the cheapest thing to use. Now this whole thing will slide apart. The gib fell out, you can hear it, hit the table. There's the dovetail and the dovetail and this is the actual gib itself. And you'll always see uh, little holes drilled in there that will keep it from moving on you when it's installed. You don't want this to move. And I gotta make sure I put it in there exactly the way I took it apart. So I'm gonna mark that now before I forget. And I'm going to clean this all up and then I'll get back to you. Alright, I cleaned the screw real good with a, a brush. This kind of brush works real good. Just with a little bit of a mineral spirits on it like that. And I blew it off good. And I put the nut back on just to see how much wear there is. And it, You know, I don't see any real wear on the screw. And we got just a little bit of play there, but it might have been that way when it was brand new because I just don't use the lathe that hard. Now, I have criticized uh, from time to time doing knurling on a lathe. And knurling is very hard on the screw and the nut, more so on the uh, cross slide. But that's one of the reasons I don't do it. Also, I do uh, from time to time use... Uh, uh, do the do more grind, use the do more grinder to do tool post grinding on the on the lathe for uh, centers and whatnot. That grinding dust gets everywhere. It gets into the screws and into the nuts and into the gibs, and uh, it's a good idea to clean that from time to time if you do that much that kind of work. It's like sandblasting. The sand goes everywhere, even though you have things uh, masked and covered. So I'm going to oil that now. And everything needs to be oiled real good when you put it back together because uh, we have removed all the lubrication. And it's really important. So I'm going to oil that good. Now I've got this cleaned up real good. And I've got the other part cleaned up real good. And the gib itself cleaned. Now I think I told you that that'll only go, that can go in there two ways. But actually it's, uh, there's really only one direction that it can fit in there. Now, without using that point of clarification here on the dovetail that goes in from this way, 
without the gib now. We uh, this surface.